the only plan you can have really uh, in this situation is to become a saint, is that you need to, to become more than you are. And maybe that is in a way a Nietzschean position, maybe just not viewed in the same direction. Like you have to transform yourself to be a catalyst for at least an arc, right? At least something to kind of hold something together as everything else collapses, you know, and as a seed for, for the new beginning. Um, so I think that that's really, at this point, I, that's why I'm so, I'm not super engaged politically. I've been a little more vocal now with how crazy COVID is because it's just so, it's like the authoritarianism is, is, is coming at a hundred miles an hour. Um, and so I'm like, okay, this is, you know, I, I drive me crazy to see that people don't, don't see it, but I don't think that even there, there's something we can do about it. Like, what are you going to do about it? It's happening. It's like the steamroller slowly moving over you. Um, and it seems like the best way is to, to just be, yeah, to be, uh, to be a saint in the world as much as possible, to be something which will bind us together as much as we can and to be able to move into this death which is coming or this crisis which is going to get worse, you know, and not completely collapse in front of it and not be a coward, mm -hmm. to not be, uh, you know, because there's, there are things coming that will make us that will make us cowards, that will make us into, that will make us, force us to, to compromise step by step to a point where people will just become shells. We're already, a lot of us are on the road there, but uh, it's like we, we need to have something to hold us together so we don't become that. Um, I think... I, I think that's like, you know, that's, that's big boy talk. Like that's the, the manly stuff right there because um, <laughs> there's, there's two sides of, 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 of what, uh, what you're saying. I want to, I want to bring up. And one of them is of course, like the, the incredible importance of what you're saying, like no matter what way it goes, say, for example, you were in communist Russia and you were perhaps lamenting that there wasn't this massive Nietzschean plan getting formed among the, the Romanovs uh, aristocracy to, to prepare for this revolution and stuff like this. And you're getting angsty with them. But ultimately, um, when the rubber hits the road, you know, you live in a time of peace, the Romanovs can serve this and there's something coming down the line that's going to be horrific. It's going to be absolutely terrible. And you may think that you're prepared. You may think that you're ready. You may think that your head's in order, you may think, but like you, man the the possibility for you breaking is unbelievable and it like it's just frightening what can happen to a person when real pressure is put on them you know this in stuff like martial arts like everybody goes around and thinks that they can fight but you put them in a gym with someone who can't fight and you just see them mentally break so quickly because mm. the pressure pain intensity fear when fear kicks in you you turn into Gollum. like it's not even so much like the christian story of uh you'll become satan you know and you'll grow horns and beat everyone up although that will happen to some people but but actually most people will just turn into like the decrepit hiding wretch of, of fear that like lumps themselves down onto the floor or something like that. Whereas the great, great, great power of the Christian story that I see so much that I think is really important and is a, a very profound thing to meditate on is the idea of walking to your death with dignity and saying like, you know, you can take my life, but you can't take my soul. There ain't, ain't nothing more powerful than that. Like that's, that's big boy stuff. And I absolutely agree. There, there are the few things that I, maybe I want to say is that one of the important one of the important parts of understanding the story of Christ, first of all, in terms of this thing, is I always say something like Christ fills up the world. Like that sounds like it just sounds like a, just a religious posturing, but it's the notion that you're gonna everything gets old and everything dies, right? You get you're gonna get old, you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna die, you're gonna get weak, you're gonna be impotent. All of these things are gonna happen to you, right? Even if you take the little blue pill, you will become impotent. It's, it's in your future. Just deal with it, right? And so the idea is in what, what you see in the story of Christ, in the, in the small version of the story and in the, the personal version of the story and then in the cosmic version of the story, is showing the manner in which all of this comes together, you could say. How there's a possibility of filling up everything with something like glory or with something like meaning. Meaning is easier to, to, for people to swallow, let's say. And so fill all of this up with meaning. So there's a way in which you can, this is something you've heard before, right? Die before you die, right? If you mm. die before you die, then you won't be a slave to death. That is that if you become chaste before you become impotent, then, then when you become impotent, it won't matter. But if you, but if you, if you idolize, for example, sexual desire, then when you become impotent, you're going to just be a loser. That's all you're going to be. You're going to be that old buffalo 
that is waiting to be killed by the lions, right? Or the old lion that's just waiting to be killed by the lion. But what something like what the story Christianity sets up is a way to kind of move into death successfully, you could say, without it yep. just being scandal, without it just being something that eats you up. So the idea, let's say, of the Jimbro, this is the issue, I would say, that one of the issues that Christianity is trying to deal with is that the, the, the way that the Romans and the Greeks, especially the, 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 the kind of Athenian Greeks, the way that they had this worship of the body and this worship of the, of, the, of the, really, worship of the body and the idealization of the body is that it doesn't take into account, it doesn't take into account death. It, it, it tries to ignore it. And that's fine for a while. Uh, but let's say, let's d- think about it this way. The Jimbro philosophy or the idea of the, the good looking fit person is also what leads to other realities, which is the fact that we hide our old people, the fact that we don't want to see death, the fact that we think that old people should act like young people, the fact that we the, the fact that we're marketed all these stupid products to make us look good and make us look young, right? It's like I understand the self-willing part that you're talking about, but there are all these other correlates that are related to it, which is the 40, the 50 year old guy who leaves his wife for the young girl and gets a, gets a, gets a a Corvette or whatever stupid thing that, that the person will do to try to, to, to keep up that ideal that is going away, no matter what you want, it's going away. It's good. You're going to die, dude. And and you're going to get old. And you're going to get decrepit. And so I think that, so, so, so let me, let me, let me give you another image, right? Which is the image of the monastic image. And we always have to understand it on a hierarchy, which is that the highest example you have is of someone who totally denies their body completely. They're like, everything I do is for the spirit. I do everything for the spirit. I will live a life of spirit in which I will even abuse my body, not completely, but to a certain extent, like monks will actually sometimes go far in terms of not taking care of themselves. They end up being really healthy for some reason anyways, and they help end up living really long time. But what people don't understand is that downstream from that is going to be, is going to be, there's going to be a healthier version of the gym bro. There's going to be something like the knight because the knight also has, has a kind of, uh, a kind of honoring of fitness and of proudness of prowess and of uh, the capacity to, to be good in martial, in, in a martial manner, to be able to accomplish certain feats, to accomplish certain adventures. Uh, and the beauty of the, of the body will be part of that, but it'll be nested in something which also puts as the highest ideal, the capacity to affront death. So what it, what it will afford that night is that maybe later in life, maybe when he's 55 and, uh, you know, things aren't going as well for him, he'll start to now have a, a practice of prayer, which will replace his practice of going, of, of fighting and of doing all these other things. And then he can move into a more monastic existence as he gets older so that when, he's, when he dies, he doesn't die in the despair of his youth and the, you know, and the hair plugs and the bronzing and the, the, the tanning salons and all the crap and like the 60 year old tattoos, you know, and all that nonsense that comes with the idealization that you're talking about as well, that at least I see in our culture. 